What does pickled cabbage, coconut, peanut butter, and soy milk have in common? They all make delicious hot pot bases. We're gonna show you four unique hot pot bases you can make at home. Soy milk soup base sounds a little funny at first, but if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. The soy milk adds an extra depth of creaminess into the soup, and it kind of reminds me of Japanese tonkatsu ramen. Ooh. Now the secret to having super thin pork belly slices is to put your pork belly in the freezer for a little bit so it's easier to cut. Maybe my knife skill is just not that good. This is the secret to super mm -hmm. thin meat. Food bloggers have everything. This is the hardest part of the recipe. If you want to, you can also buy pre-sliced pork belly, then you don't even have to do this step. Fry up your pork belly slices in a medium pot. There's no need to add oil since there's plenty of fat on the pork belly. That's how I like it. Stir fry until the water content comes out. See those bubbles? Cook until it is beautifully caramelized and it will add an extra depth of flavor. Don't worry about overcooking since pork belly won't go dry or overcook. Think of how long dishes like donporo or braised pork belly cook for. At this point, have some hot water ready on the side. When you pour the hot water in with the oil, it will create a milky soup. Add in your miso, use a strainer to mix it in so it breaks apart evenly, add your doubanjiang for some savory and spicy flavor, and a little bit of soy sauce. This is probably one of my favorite things in this hot pot base, the fresh tofu skin. Rip it into long strands and add it in now so it absorbs all the flavor. Add in your sesame paste, this is where the creamy, nutty flavor comes from. Turn down the heat and add in your soy milk. If you don't do that, the milk would separate and it wouldn't look very good, but still edible. Transfer it to your hot pot, preferably every single drop. Pouring everywhere. Add in your scallion and white sesame. This one I'm super excited to taste. Mmm, the bean taste of the soy milk complements the miso and complements the sesame paste. This is really well-rounded, very rich soup. And I have to rave about the tofu skin again. It's so soft and silky, it has absorbed all the deliciousness from the soup. Pickled cabbage and pork is a staple for Northeastern cuisine, so it's only natural to have a pickled cabbage pork hot pot. With the pork belly, there's a bunch of hairs on it, and I'm gonna burn it off with this burner. Let's do it. Scrape off the char with the back of your knife. Smooth as a baby's bottom. Prepare your soup base. Add in your pork skin side down. Add cold water, scallion, ginger, citron peppercorn, and star anise. Have the heat on high, close the lid, and cook for 30 minutes. Nap time! Get back to work. While that's going, chop up your suan cai. Then rinse it, wring it, and set it aside. When the 30 minutes are up, take the pork out and put it in the fridge to cool. This would make it easier to cut. Don't throw away that broth, it's going to be your base. Heat up your wok and add in your chopped up suan cai and stir fry until it dries out. This will bring out the aroma even more. Sour. Mm. Now add in your oil and garlic and stir fry until fragrant. Pour that soup in that you just made. It will be best to do it through a sieve so it catches all the aromatics. Bring it to a boil and add salt and white pepper to taste. Your pork should be cooled by now. Slice it thinly and set it aside. We have the pork belly par cooked before, so it's about 60%. And now this is time you cook it all the way through. You usually have bean threads in there as well. These are made of mung beans. They taste really good with this. Okay, now we let that boil as well. It's sour, but there's like a sweetness that comes back afterwards. And it doesn't feel greasy at all. It just cuts through all the fat of the pork belly. You may have heard of Hainanese chicken rice. And if you want that recipe, you can click in the description down below. But have you heard of Hainanese coconut chicken hot pot? We have this old coconut. Technically, you can open one of these three dots and the water would just come out, but they're all pretty hard. So I guess I need to figure out some other way to open this coconut. I'm gonna use the back of my knife so I don't lose a finger. 
Ready? Yo, this thing is hard. That's what she said. I think I'm gonna break the knife. Kevin? You didn't even put a dent in it. Breakout counter, Kevin. Breakout counter, Kevin. And I'm back again. <laughs> so we watched on YouTube and found out it's because we're doing it the wrong way. You see how the lines go this way? We have to go this way. Opposite of it. I actually did it correctly before. I was just too weak. Yo! Yo! Um, guess this is not really juice. <laughs> is this still edible? Oh my god. Well, that coconut is definitely off. It's sour. Do you think the flesh is still good? Should I risk it? No. It's sour. <laughs> And off we go to the store. And we're back. I shook this one this time. Make sure it's liquidy. Hopefully this one works. It's dripping. It's like birth. The water's broken. Ta-da! Yes, finally. I'm gonna taste a little bit in case. Okay, tastes like coconut. Remove the husk with a small knife. Make sure to remove the brown bits on the inside too. Rinse the coconut flesh off and slice half of it and set it aside. This will be used for the hot pot later. For the rest, chop them up into chunks for the blender. Ooh, flying! Finish dealing with the old, let's deal with the young. So does the young coconut become the old coconut? Hmm. Oh, you know those videos of those people like opening it in like two seconds? It's been like two hours. My hands are tired. Ooh, juice. Combine the coconut waters and the hard earned flesh in the blender and blitz. Now we have coconut milk. Strain it out and if you want to make coconut shreds, you can keep the pulp and toast it in the oven. Boil the coconut milk that we just made and add some water, ginger slices, red dates and goji berries. Bring it to a boil and you're good to go. This soup base has a fresh, sweet taste and would go well with this complimentary dipping sauce. Mince some ginger and garlic, add in some chopped chilies and coriander and a squeeze of lime juice, soy sauce and some water to thin it out. Just before you want to start eating, you want to put your chicken in. Typically you will use a whole chicken, but it's just the two of us, so we're having some chicken thighs. And then put the rest of your coconut in. This needs to boil for about 10 minutes. You want to have some of the soup before you want to boil some other stuff because the coconut taste is so pure. And then you have the sweetness of the chicken in there. Wow, this is so refreshing. Definitely a good one if you don't want something too greasy. Satay soup base gained its popularity back in Hong Kong around the same time as fatty beef because both of them complement each other so well. This one has a lot of aromatics. Chop up your shallots, garlic, chilies and onions. Heat up your wok on low heat. Add your oils and shallots. Cook slowly and patiently until it's nice and golden. Add your onions, garlic and chili and take your time to cook it down so the fragrance comes out. After the onions are soft, put in your sauces. Add in your satcha sauce, satay sauce, doubanjang for some spice, shrimp paste for more umami, sesame paste and peanut butter for that quintessential satay flavor. Slowly push it around the wok and stir fry it until it's fragrant. If you add the water immediately, there won't be much aroma. When it bubbles, add in some Shaoxing wine at the edge. You'll use one to one water and chicken broth. First add in your water, after it boils, add in your broth. Flavor the soup base with salt, soy sauce, dark soy for color, and some black pepper to finish it off. There's so much depth. I guess all the aromatics being like cooked in the oil and the, all the different sauces, it just melts together so well. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and check out our four other hot pot bases right here.